warning. This episode contains strong language. So let's just talk yeah, about a little sure. bit of, yeah, your journey of getting on MasterChef and, you know, how you <laughs> got there. Sure. And this is crazy. Uh, really one of the most, I would say, random things that's ever happened to me. Um, I've never, uh, I, I still don't know if I really want to be on TV or anything. It's too late now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but. Welcome to the Lone Star Play Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Join me and a famous guest. We discuss their career, life, food, Texas, and everything in between. Let's get started. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of the Lone Star Plate Podcast. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. All right, uh, we have an amazing episode today, guys. Okay, this is super exciting. We have Chef Michael Silverstein. He was on the last season of MasterChef, you know, the show on Fox with Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, that MasterChef. All right. He made it just over halfway through the season, did an awesome job. Um, and we had an awesome conversation. OK, I've always wanted to know about MasterChef a little bit from behind the scenes. I've heard some stories and I've heard some things and we busted some myths, myths, <laughs> MasterChef myths. OK, so that was actually really cool. Right, I could just ask him directly, hey, okay, what about this? What about that? So, um, you know, he spills the beans on some stuff, on some stuff he can. Okay, look, he signed some documents. Okay, it's like legit. Okay, so he can, there's some things he can't reveal, but what he could reveal, he revealed, and it was awesome. Um, you know, yeah, you know, just about cooking, auditioning. You know, how did he get on the show? How, how, how did that happen? Uh, being on the show, what that's like, um, what what it's really like to be on the show. Okay, what you see, what we see, right when we watch the show, um, and what is actually happening there. Re you know, fascinating, to be honest with you. And we talk about his new book. That's right, he's got a book out. It's awesome. Okay, it's called New Keto Cooking. Oh, bam, right here. Okay. Because this is going to be, uh, if you're listening, I'm showing it to the camera. Okay. It's a great book. It's called New Keto Cooking. And just beautiful. Just It's just an amazing book. Uh, so we go over the book as well. Uh, look, tons of recipes. Okay. he Look, he did the photography himself. So that's a, not another amazing thing. But that's something that, uh, you know, sort of new chefs are having this talent of being able to capture their art as well, which is an art unto itself. Right. So it's absolutely amazing when you think about everything, you know, he put into this book. It's honestly mind blowing and inspiring. So if you're thinking about doing that or if you cook online, if you're trying to, you know, push, uh, you know, cooking dishes and getting them on Instagram and stuff like that. This is a great conversation about that as well. You know what it takes, even equipment to use cost, you know, what, what the, the ethic of it, right. The, the work ethic of it, um, you know, just the details of it R really cool. Just again, this was just such a cool conversation. Um, eye opening. He's such a friendly guy. Um, super cool. You're just going to love it. You can see why he's successful at this point, uh, with this book that's doing phenomenal right now. Um, and, you know, honestly, you got to hurry up and get this book because it's going to sell out before Christmas. So or it could be sold out by the time you listen to this. I'm sure they'll get more copies. But, you know, there's an ebook e version. But if you want like the physical, I don't know. You know, look, last time I'm just saying they're flying off the shelves. So if, well, as soon as you hear this, stop, go get the book first and then, you know, listen to the podcast because you don't want to miss out on that. All right. And, and it's about keto. Look, we've never had a, a chef on to talk about keto, so that was interesting. I didn't know much about it. We got into that and, and broke it down. But I can tell you something this right now. I look at this cookbook, and it says keto on it, but I look through it. it it's nothing like, oh, keto. It doesn't make sense. Like It's just like a cool cookbook. So it's really accessible to anybody, which is awesome. That was a smart move on his part, in my opinion. Um, just a great guy, great book, great conversation. Um, really looking forward to what he does coming up 2021 and um, just everything he's got coming up. And he's in Austin too. He's moved to Austin, just been here about a year. So that was cool. Maybe when, uh, you know, this pandemic 
um, settles down, we'll go out and have a beer or something or a meal or, or something. So, okay. Oof, yeah, just great, cool book. Anyway, uh, funny story real quick. Just, just I want to make it quick, I promise. The, we, I actually already interviewed him like a few weeks ago. That's right, I did. You know what happened? I lost the interview. Something on my computer, on the Zoom, it just, it didn't get it all. I had like six minutes of, it got some of it. It recorded six minutes of an hour conversation. And we had this awesome conversation. Okay, it was amazing. Just the chemistry, we were just going back and forth and, you know, just really what we want on the Lone Star Plate. And I'm excited about it. And then when it comes time, and I didn't even realize it till you know, a week later, that was even horrible. So I had to reach back out. Hey, chef, listen, I'm really sorry. Can we do this interview again? I know it's going to be hard to capture the magic we had before. We're going to try. And we did. I think it turned out great. And we had an even, might I say, a better conversation because at that time, his book, I couldn't get the book yet. It was on pre-order and that sort of thing. So it did give me time to get his book. And I was able to flip through it. We had in hand. So in a way, it might be better. But I will say that conversation was awesome. It was awesome. Um, so pff, it's just going to be one of those episodes, you know, it just will, will forever be lost. And I'll be honest, that's the only time that's ever happened to me. I've never had that. I would tell you guys. Yeah, y'all wouldn't know, you know, what happens unless I tell you. It's the only time it's happened. It was devastating. But Chef Michael was so cool. Uh, his rep, uh, Haley, uh, was also very, very cool about help helping us, you know, get that back set up. So thank you to Chef Michael for taking the time again to deal with my dumb ass. So. Again, let's sit back and enjoy this great uh, podcast with Chef Michael Silverstein uh, from Master Chef out with his new book, New Keto Cooking. No, not Keto. Yeah, Keto. <laughs> I said Keto before. It's like, what is this? The Green Hornet? Okay. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, but before we get to that, as always, it's time for Bet You Didn't Know That segment. What is that, you ask, Patrick? Well, it's an awesome segment about food facts. I bet you didn't know. Why, why would he do that? Because we're sponsored by Texas Real Food. What is Texas Real Food, Patrick? Well, Texas Real Food is an awesome website, texasrealfood.com. Okay, you put in your zip code, it pulls up all these great places around you. What kind of places, Patrick? Well, the kind of places you want to go to. Well, why? Because all natural, organic, fresh, they're working with farms. What kind of places? Farm to table, restaurants, farmers markets, butchers, maybe just a cool store, maybe just a cool food truck or restaurant that's not necessarily farm to table, if you will, but they're serving fresh organic stuff, right? A store, a grocer, small grocer, right? Just all cool places around you. You're not gonna get that on Google, I promise you. It's gonna bring up everything. So this is just a cool way to, if you live that lifestyle, boom. Okay, these places support farmers and ranchers and the local food community. That's what Texas Real Food's about. So um, love it. So that's what this segment moving into. Bet you didn't know that because on their social media, if you follow them, Texas Real Food, they just put up all these cool food facts. If you heard my dogs, I apologize. They're, they're barking. Um, so that's what we're going to go over are some Texas Real Food facts first fact are you ready bet you didn't know eggshell color is determined by the breed of the hen interesting right has nothing to do with anything else you might have heard but patrick why is it when i go to the grocery store there's eggs the different colors right there you go breed of the hen all right next one Ooh. you're never gonna believe this okay I, I think you will actually all right bet you didn't know the beer company guinness actually founded the guinness book of world records that's right the guinness beer that's that's their book of records yes they are connected and there's actually a cool story behind that um, of why they even decided to do that. 
So Google it because I don't have time because I'm in the middle of something else. You know, this segment. All right. Bet you didn't know. Pan de Campo is the official state bread of Texas. What? Patrick, you ask? What is that? Pan de Campo. It's like that round bread. Okay. It's, it's got a little, they, they score it like an X. Get a little f- fresh flour on top. Pan de Campo. So check it out. That's the official state bread of Texas. Yeah, you probably like it. We had a state bread of Texas. Yeah, we do. All right, one more, and then that's it. And this one, I'll be honest, you're not going to believe it. I'm telling you, you're not going to believe it. All right, bet you didn't know adult pigs can run up to 11 miles an hour. That's a seven minute mile. (laughs) The fuck out of here. That's better than I can run a mile. Adult pigs. That is it. Can they keep that 11? You know, how long can they keep running at 11 miles an hour? So, yeah, pigs are fast. I'll tell you something. They're fast. All right. Well, that was interesting. So, hope you enjoyed that segment. I did. All right. As always, Texas Real Food as well. If you go to their website, texasrealfood.com slash discover. They've also got other features on the website. So, you know, recipes. Um, you know, articles, reviews of podcasts and other podcasts, not just ours, a food podcast. Is a, there's a really cool one they just did about farmers um, that's on there. Uh, but, you know, there's also just whatever ideas and articles, like I said, reviews and just cool stuff. There's a there's a really great classic potato latke uh, with homemade applesauce recipe on there. What's a latke? I hope I'm saying that right. Latke? Yeah. Latke, 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 latke. Um, it's like a potato hash thing, right? Really, that's all. It's just like like a hash brownish, right? Like a hash brown. Um, deli- I'm looking at the picture right now. It's delicious. I'm sorry. I'm just. I'm, I'm. I'm literally distracted. How good this looks. So please check this out on the website. Classic potato latkes with homemade applesauce from Chef Ben. He does all the recipes um, on the website just amazing so look it's a common dish for hanukkah that's right okay people you know we don't just celebrate christmas here on the podcast this is for all holidays for all you know celebrations whatever you got going kwanzaa christmas navidad dia de los reyes day of the kings okay as many celebrations in hanukkah right and you could just you can eat stuff from other stuff i eat uh, you know i'll eat this okay it looks delicious i mean i can't stop looking at it with the applesauce mm. pork chops and the applesauce shout out robert chef robert he'll he's the only one that will get that joke um it is from the brady bunch but anyway okay um that's enough guys let's just get to the episode all right let's get to this phenomenal episode with chef michael silverstein from uh master chef also with his new cookbook out again new keto cooking um awesome conversation you're gonna love it um all right so without further ado let's get to it oh oh wait 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 our website thelonestarplate.com don't forget check it out and please look i got one thing to ask just do me a favor and i'm gonna get to the episode if you're on Apple, if you listen to this on Apple Podcasts, leave us a review. That helps because that helps put the podcast into like upper standings as well and gets more people to see it and blah, blah, blah. It's really one of the only ones you can do reviews on. So please, that would be awesome. If you listen to it on Apple Podcasts, please uh, leave us a review. Um, that would be great. So anyway, thank you so much uh, for supporting um, you know us through the podcast, however you listen to it or take this in. Thank you so much. So... All right, let's get to it. Chef Michael Silverstein. Enjoy. Hello, hello. Hey, what's up, brother? How you doing? Oh, man. This feels familiar. Right? (laughs) Deja vu here. I'm a deja fool is what I am. Although, uh, look, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. 
We're oh just, no, I'm just gonna say I'm I'm not mad about doing it. like th- I had a good time. I appreciate that, dude. That you have yeah, no idea really how much that deal. means. Um, I'm sure I've explained a little bit in the intro that I haven't done yet, but I always do, you know, for the beginning. But um, yeah, you know, so we were doing our last <laughs> episode and we finished and it was great and uh, yeah, I thought it was one of the best ones we've done and boom, six minutes and forty two seconds to be exact, it cuts off. It's actually yeah. the only time I've had to deal with Zoom. Um, uh, what do you call it? Like tech support, right? I've mm. never had to deal with them. It, it's, I guess it went it did, okay. It did happen to me once in a, um, I did a live cooking class and it just like, it just failed. Off. Yeah. It just, the, uh, the recording just the failed. The recording. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. It like, yep. it just sent me like a notification, like a pop-up. It was just like recording <laughs> failed. Um, oh man. Yeah. That's the worst. Yeah. yeah. Mine, mine gave me a file, but again, it just cut off it. You, you were in the middle of saying something cool and, oh really okay yeah. yeah my the time it happened to me it just like nothing it just nothing like, yeah that's why i contacted him i was like look it it i got something you know there's something to work with here and they you know they had me do a couple things but at the end of the day there's nothing that really they can do it's gone once it's gone yeah. it's gone and, and now i've set up a yeah. system to in case something where i've got uh got oh, like a screen so, recording kind of thing yeah i've got like a backup so no, no matter what uh i'll always so, get them from here now so do you want to, um, a, a, do you want, did, did you plan to address that or we just pretend it didn't happen? I got, no, I, I definitely care. address it. I always address things. Yeah, that's the truth. That's the, this is it. I'm going to put this part in my goal. Oh, is cool. That me explaining, you know, that that's part of it. I like the, I think it's kind of funny and, and, and always in retrospect, right? Because at the time I should have taken a video of myself. I was so mad, man. I'm like, oh my God, no way. No way. I, can't, I cannot believe I lo- I've never lost an interview. I've never not had an interview before. Right. I've never completed an interview and not had it. That's never happened yeah. to me. So I just didn't. Know well, there, there's a there's a couple good upgrades this time. We both have our books. Yes, that is exactly true. It gave me time to get your <laughs> book, man. And most importantly, I invested in wireless earbuds. Boom. So, man, it's Boom. a new world out here. It's a new world out here. It's a I new world. <laughs> I, love <laughs> I, think, I think in our last video, I had like the iPhone white, uh, which those things. work too, right? Those were, but yeah, the wireless, yeah, sure. come on. Yeah, for sure. It's like the best, you know, for sure. <laughs> uh, th- yeah, man, exactly. The book thing for sure. It gave me a chance to get your book. I've got it like in my physical hands, which is awesome. <laughs> the first glance of, of the book, man, just right. That, that what's the first thing you do when you get a book? You start flipping through it. You just start flipping. You just start flipping. There's really yeah. no rhyme or re- And bro, the pictures are <laughs> Thank you. ridiculous. Well, you already we're, we're in the lab before. I mean, I mean, it, right here. That's yeah, right behind you. Right, you got all the lights. Yeah. You got yeah, you've got everything there. I mean, the pictures are, and you did these pictures too, man. Which is so. Yeah. How, how often does that happen? Where the chef does the pictures too. I'll tell you talent it, uh, all to itself. Well, and I don't consider myself a photographer. So th- this Bro, was like w- you, way you out of my comfort now. zone. You should now. I, I mean, I had to like, I mean, I didn't have to, this was something the publisher actually asked me if I wanted to do uh, before this, I've only really, you know, it's been something I played with on Instagram, but I never took myself that seriously, just something I enjoyed. Like, I, I think for me, like a- anything that I do, I just, I want to do it at least decent, you know, I, awesome. I and so like, yeah, even on Instagram, yeah. I tried to figure this out, but when the publisher said, Hey, you want to, um, you want to do your own photos? I said, what <laughs> you think I'm capable of that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, whew. So that, that was a, a whole other challenge. Uh, that did you really have all the gear or some surprise. of the gear or what, or what was the deal with that? Uh, like gear wise? I, I had most of it. I got a second camera before the book. I was using one. And then if I was changing shots overhead or whatever, I'd, I was doing the manual work. So it was only when I posted on Instagram, but when I had to do 65, like print quality photos, um, very quickly, uh, it forced me to kind of think about how to do this a little bit more efficiently and consistently. Cause you want, when you're flipping through it again, Instagram is one thing, but when you're flipping through a book, you want a consistent level uh, I see. in terms of lighting and exposure and kind of an aesthetic that, that runs through the book. Yeah. And so every time I move my camera from the overhead mount to the face, you know, the front on mount, you're, yeah. you're readjusting level. It became worth it for me to invest in some new equipment so that I'm kind of plug and play now where like 
I got my camera on the same settings in every photo in there. And then I'm just kind of popping a different dish in and it, it gave me a rhythm and, and a consistency that was really like required uh, nice. for something going into print. Yeah. So I, I did have to invest a little bit, but um, I don't have crazy expensive cameras. They're, 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 uh, I mean, you, you could find two, $3,000 lenses, forget about the cameras that people. Yeah, use that's true. The lenses is you're right. It's the lenses. Yeah. But I shot the whole book with two $500 cameras and two $100 lenses. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm cool with that. Like I, can you, you know, say what the camera brand is? Yeah. They're Canons. It's Canons. Canon lens, beautiful. Canon cameras. That's yeah, what I got T7. right here, baby. Canons. Yeah. T seven eyes. Nice. Um, I bought one of them used the second one I bought it used. Cause I'm like, <laughs> fine. Um, yeah, there's really nothing wrong with, I like used, used lenses. I do that. I mean, all the yeah, time, like a hundred percent, as long as they're not trashed, like, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. That's what it's for. Actually, Honestly, yeah. that's what that industry is for. It's made for that stuff to be yeah, passed sure. around and for moved sure. around, you know? It's cool though, because I don't know if I, I don't know if I can like do this in reverse. These pictures, I'm have... sorry. These I'm so distracted, dude. These pictures are ridiculous. Show us good. which one are you looking at? Like, I'm looking at all of them, guys. Like, <laughs> holy oh, cow. Pork belly. I, That's I mean that Korean dude, pork belly. It's like every it literally every picture is like money shot. Right? Like every picture that. is ridiculous, dude. Just ridiculous. I and and I mean, that's what's so great. You made the food. You just, you know, you come up with the recipes. You also design the aesthetic of the layout of the dish and taking the, you know, you, you just controlled everything about it. It's just so beautiful. Like it's just amazing. Thank you. Dude. I really appreciate that. I, I was very insecure about this piece. Cause like, dude, you know, you're a chef, you know, like, I, first I've of done all, a lot of food photography It's hard as it's hard Fuck, and right. it's just so dude, hard. even with food you know I, I bet you're like me where like i feel every dish could always be a little better like there's always right. a dash of salt or whatever uh you know, even if people who are eating and they're like oh my god this is amazing i'm like yeah you, you always critique of course because yeah. you know what it was supposed to be from the beginning yeah, and, and right it's and a no certain, one else does that's the little like kind of um the artistic piece of food that yeah, i love is like sure it can always be refined a little bit, yeah. an extra grain of salt, an extra pinch of cayenne. But yep. I am not a photographer or a writer by trade. And so, man, this book pushed me out of my element and really Love forced that. me. It really Love forced that. me to like, uh, you know, just get better, just learn a craft and, and fucking like take it seriously. Like I said, food photography was a hobby for me with Instagram and stuff, but this really forced me to like, work on it which is, which is great because that's the new era right that's where we're moving in the direction yeah. of people having autonomy with their brand and what they do and because we we have tools i mean as much as you want to talk about these different social media and this that they do give you an option to create a platform and and financially right, right sustain yourself and if you have the right. people are learning how to do these things right and yeah that's right the more you can learn these tools I mean, it's the better. Yeah. And I, I feel like in today's like 2020, 2021 coming up here, like uh, having one skill set's almost not enough anymore. It's like <laughs> yeah, you, you've got to be able to do yeah. a couple things uh, at least. I, I don't know, especially if you're kind of self-employed um, and, and trying to make it on your own. Uh, you yeah, absolutely. You can't just be good at like the one thing you do. You've got to wear different hats. Um it's tough, yeah. man, out here. It's tough trying to make it in this uh, in this space where you're not getting a a, a, a two a biweekly paycheck and you're trying to just like make it work on your own. It's tough. Absolutely, man. That's the hustle. But that's where you know you hear story, you hear success stories, and you hear that part of the story that you're saying, and that's always a lot of times a moment where they you know you can walk away because it's mm. right, it's whatever or you start to peel away slowly from it. That's another way, right? The, the death by a thousand cuts. So you slowly right. start to pull away from it and start to go down this other avenue that's more, you know, whatever, just safe, I guess. I mean, if I had to use a word, right? Just whatever, a, a nine to five, or you took a job, right? A corporate job, something. You just took something different. Whereas it's that moment where you just almost have to dig in twice as hard, to yeah. be honest with you, to really... Yeah. Because the truth is, if you keep going with it, it will it will become yeah. something. 
It really will if you put hard work into it. It really will. It's tough though. I mean, I'm not going to lie. There are days that, you know, I don't have, every day is not a good day, right? Like there are days sure. where I'm like, I don't know where the hell I'm getting my next paycheck. And um, yeah. there are days where I'm like, man, should I just get like, am I going to need to get a job or should I just get a job and stop putting myself through this madness all the time? And there's other days where I'm like so grateful to be on this journey and like just having a blast, you know, regardless yeah. of money, I'm just having a blast and sure. uh, kind of seeing things through that I've always dreamed of, but it's not easy there. I'm not going to lie. There's Maybe it's a mix. Days where I'm like, it, yeah, maybe. You That's know, true. Yeah. that that happened. Like you said, you have to have multiple talents and you, you'll you notice that with people that are successful. They got multiple things going on. They got multiple streams. They got That's a true. job here. They're doing this. They're doing that. They're doing that. And sometimes <laughs> yeah, I, I know right? successful people. And then they're like driving Uber at night and like do it, like just hustling, like doing whatever you gotta it hustle. takes. Absolutely. And I respect that a hundred percent. And Me I've too. been there. I have worked a day job and then went to the restaurant at four o'clock and got out at 1 a.m. and then was back at the office at 8 a.m. to like, cause I needed to when I was in my twenties and stuff. And um, I did that for a long time working two jobs. Um, it's it. I respect the hustle. And uh, yeah. you know, if that's, if that's where I got to go, that's where I got to go. I'm, I'm just, I'm just hoping to kind of like keep being able to share my food and, and stay alive. <laughs> like, Oh, that's know, never going to stop, dude. You'll always keep. Yeah, doing yeah, that. yeah. Right. That that's never going to stop from you, dude. No, no matter what. Yeah. We're, we're, and it, look, the journey always. You always thinking this about movies, okay? Th this mm. is a good analogy here, okay? I was thinking this about movies and actors and how some actors can, you know, live through different decades and periods and still you know, retain some sort of relevance, right? Mm. And other actors start to fall out. And you think, why? Why does that start to happen? And I think what happens is, right, you get used to a certain thing and then you don't want to leave that, but the world changes and you kind of have to take those risks sure. and those chances with the changes. And right. I understand it, it needs to be calculated, but you know, I think it's the risk takers. It's the ones that, Interesting. you know, are willing to fall down that willing to go with something new, even if you're used to something else, you know, an older actor taking on some new kind of movie that's different. Right. But they do it. They just, they go for it. And then it becomes some big hit. Right. And then they're relevant again. And they're, mm -hmm. and you, that, that's who sticks around. You know, I think yeah. chefs are and the same way. Chefs who totally. take a risk, that's what I was who have say. been around a it's long the time, same thing. and they're like, boom, I'm going to come out with a new concept that's going to, yeah. you're never going to see this coming, yeah. you know? Oh, food changes constantly. Yeah, you got to stay and, with and it, And what's right? trendy and like, yeah. man, it changes or, constantly. Or staying ahead of that, creating yeah. trends as and well. Now, and now, like, there's this whole online food world that's a whole different thing that I've kind of fallen 100%. into and... um and is a whole other game. But I, I, to your point, like I see what you mean about actors in Hollywood or like it, truth be told in a lot of like the entertainment space, you have to be able to pivot. You yeah. have to be able to kind of like be flexible. And, and like, if you're and this kind of ties into our wearing multiple hats discussion too, because you can't, you can be the best in the world at one specific thing, but it's going to run out. Someone's going to, you know, push it to a new level or, you know, a new trend is going to come out or whatever, you know? And like, I think about that a lot with keto. I'll be honest. I, I'm, it doesn't concern me because I was, you know, I've been cooking for my whole life. So I've been keto for two and a half years. I love all food and can get passionate around all food. I'll probably be keto for the rest of my life, but I still do a bunch of private chef stuff and nothing to do with keto at all. I love cooking all food. So one, like people constantly say to me, Oh, what happens if keto dies out? What is then I'll cook something else. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't, I don't understand the question. Like people still got to eat, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, the other part of that, I is don't like, understand the question. That's funny. That's <laughs> the other part of it is like, is anybody going to sit here to my face and tell me that we should all be eating the same amount of sugar that we do today? You know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, that's the, a great the point. American diet is saturated with sugar from breakfast through the whole day. Right. Yeah. And drinks, maybe food, keto will everything. die out. Yeah. Maybe keto will die out, uh, as a trend. But I think that the idea of eating whole foods, meat and veggies that are just still, I, I don't think that's a trend. I think that's just, um, 
common sense for me, at least. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. You're not. We'll I, check I, back I in with me in five years or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but but we'll, we'll see. You can mark I my words. I, you, you got know, a new we'll, cookbook. It's like new something else cooking, right? It's right. like, <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah, which would be cool if amazing. you did that, right? Because that would show there's nothing growth and change. And that's hey, true. I that's do true. other kinds of cooking. Like, there's nothing yeah, that's wrong true. With that. I mean, I, I worked with a, a chef, um, awesome guy. He, he was, I met him at a, a Spanish restaurant I worked at. And then I, I came back around and he was working at a French restaurant. I mean, it's like chefs have to learn a lot of, you can't just be good at one thing to make it in this business, I think. Um, Absolutely. And you can pop around really not too hard. A few days in the kitchen, you learn a few of the different things, but you start to learn a lot of the stuff's pretty similar right? To how we do things. You're just going to learn specifics. And the longer you work in a kitchen, the quicker you pick up those specifics. That's all that's that right. is, right? That, that's, that's, right. Really, yeah. that's really what it is. And that's what you want to do. You want to jump around and, oh, this is cool. This is a new way to prep this or do this, or this is how they cook this protein. And yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. It, it makes you more, yeah, you know, able-bodied to do anything or, to, or take For an sure. opportunity somewhere sure. else. For you sure. Know. But the, yeah, the, the food world's constantly changing. The health community is constantly changing. Yeah, all absolutely. kind of parts. It's always shifting. You know, I, yeah. I remember the food of the 90s. And, uh, <laughs> you know, today it's it's like fashion or anything. Like, you, yeah, you know, great point. It's funny. Yeah. Like, you ever you ever watch a movie that doesn't feel maybe it was like 2005, to early 2000s. And, and it doesn't seem like it's that long ago, but just the vision you're like man this thing looks so old <laughs> do you know what i'm trying to say like the, the resolution yes there you is, go. that's how i think yeah. about food like in in five years we're gonna look back on this and be like that was so outdated you know? what was that yeah absolutely yeah what was 100%. that um but then there's things that are always tried and true right they're timeless, always yeah. just timeless stuff uh that's why it's always nice to just take something familiar and give it the twist, right? The old, yeah. the, the old way of doing that. Um, so, so let's talk a little bit more about this book, man. Actually, you know what, before we get into the book, let's give people a little bit of history of, of your cooking. You mentioned a little bit of it. Um, but you know, famously you were just on master chef, which was about master just chef last year, 10. right? Yeah. 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 Master chef. Like, yeah. <laughs> it, it feels and, like forever because the process was a lot longer than that um you I, lived that's true you you were what from what actually aired to what you actually did was you know way before that and your whole journey yeah. to get there so let's just talk yeah, about a little sure. bit of, yeah your journey of getting on master chef and you know how you <laughs> got sure. there and this is crazy. Uh, really one of the most i would say random things that's ever happened to me um i've never uh, I, I still don't know if I really want to be on TV or anything. It's too late now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, it was never a plan of mine. I um, frankly, like, I've always enjoyed being kind of behind the scenes, so to speak. Um, and uh, man, one day, you know, I'm sitting around and I had started, I had started a diet. I'd started keto. Um, I think I had like just turned 30 and I realized I was like, man, I'm like, pushing 350 pounds or so i'm like this is enough like i gotta make a change so i uh started keto immediately just like i don't know somebody who loves to cook i just started cooking up good keto food and um you know my fiance is like man you gotta you have to like make an instagram or do something with this this is really cool like nobody's really doing this you know wow. um nobody's making keto food like elevated or whatever um, and I was just doing it in my house for me, really, because yeah. I just wanted to like stay interested. Yeah. Um, like I'm not going to sit around and eat a salad every day. It's just not how I eat. So, um, <laughs> you know, I wanted to eat real food and like make it fun. Made an Instagram. Long story short, a couple months in, I got a few followers, you know, a few followers, nothing crazy. Um, maybe a couple thousand followers or whatever, which is still, I was still really proud of it. Yeah. I was like, whoa, what, what happened Absolutely. here? Um, and basically, um, my name was submitted for um, for a MasterChef season with just like kind of like nomination thing. You just put in your name and uh, and your Instagram or Facebook or whatever. They reviewed it. Two weeks later, I get a phone call from an LA number. Like, I answer, "Hey, can you be in New York City to cook for one of Gordon Ramsay's chefs in three days?" Uh, yeah, yeah, I can. Wow. Wow. <laughs> uh, and it was Crazy. wild because. They said, there's not going to be a kitchen there. So you got to bring a dish and you can like assemble it. 
you'll have a couple minutes to assemble it, but you can't cook here because it's at a hotel. Uh, so you just got to bring a dish. They're like, it's cool if it's cold. We understand. Like, we're not going to judge you for the fact that it's going to be kind of like cold. But can you be in Times Square in, in, in two or three days? Uh, and That's, crazy. A dish. That's crazy. Yeah, present a dish for this like culinary director for Gordon Ramsay. Um, so I, I, I sous vide some duck breast, did a roasted golden beets, goat cheese mousse, some strawberry coulis, kind of did like a nice little setup, threw it in a cooler, got the, in little, you know, little delis, yeah. got there, put it on the plate, <laughs> duck pre-sliced. Uh, I bet it was still in, a little warm if you had it in the cooler no. and the delis. No. Hell no. It was like a six hour drive at the time. for. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. no. I'm yeah, sorry. No. I thought no, it was nuts. I was living in Pittsburgh at the time. This was like three years ago now. Oh. <laughs> um, definitely not warm. Uh, but, but No, definitely not warm. No. And uh, <laughs> I didn't know what the hell was going on. I get there and there's like, if you've ever watched American Idol, you know, like they go to the different cities and they uh, people line up with the signs and there's thousands of people. Yeah, so yeah, totally. So that's what this is. They're doing the citywide uh, open auditions and like, eight or 10 cities and each of them have like thousands of people show up or whatever and try to get in. I was kind of one of these people who was invited. So I didn't have to do that. I didn't have to like get in line. So I get there, they bring me to this room uh, with like a hundred (laughs) people. I I put this, this duck down um, and this corner director walks by and he like, just like leans in. He's like, he knocked us out of the park. And that was kind of like how it started. So yeah, it was months more audition. So wow. basically, it's, it starts with about 20,000 people or so, and they just keep having that number and cutting people. So about half get through to the next round, a couple, you know, maybe eight, 10,000 people, and then that's cut in half. And so I had to go back to New York a couple more times for more testing and auditioning. They do some camera work as well as food. It's not just the food. It's also your camera presence and all that. And I'd never been on TV. I'd never, I didn't have a YouTube channel. I didn't have anything. Like I was a, yeah. I, I was nothing. Um <laughs> few months later you're somebody michael okay you've always been somebody <laughs> but tell you a few months later i'm flown to la we're down to 80 people 80s cut to 40 40s cut to 20 Woo! You know, that i made it on the show so I was, oh my so, gosh uh, it was it was basically a giant cooking competition um so you're doing this like, yeah this pre master chef sort of thing before master chef that's what right, i mean before, it was it yeah. was it was a good half a year of continuation through this wow. process long before I was ever even in, in LA for filming. I mean, long before anything goes on camera. That's crazy. Is there any, are you meeting some of the other people along the audition process and getting to know them? Yeah, you are, but your, um, your interactions are pretty limited because they don't want people to kind of like talk or whatever. So like um, I did like, I met this um, friend of mine. It's actually a really, it was a hard, that would be hard for me. I'm so personable, dude. Like, yeah, it was hard. I made this. I made a me. friend the first time I went to New York. I made a friend, and we were like all the way through the process together, and then we were both waiting to get to find out if we were going to be flown to L.A. for the top eighty. And when they called me and invited me to L.A., they were they were like, "You cannot tell anybody. If you do, you're automatically rejected." So I couldn't tell her, and. It Ooh. broke my heart. It yeah. broke my heart. Ugh. And she, unfortunately, she didn't get the call. And it it literally broke my heart. Yeah. And she's texting me like, I still haven't heard from them what's going on. And I'm like, yeah. Oh, <gasps> man. Well, she'll try again. You know, you hear all these she people that, that try multiple times, right? And get on the show. That that happens all the time on these shows. Mm-hmm. I mean, all the yeah. time. Where, you A know, bunch of the people stay who stay with it. M- most of my cast, that was not their first tryout or, at, you know, I know people that oh, have been well, there you go. three, four times. Yeah. And yeah, anybody who's watching right now, like, please try. It is a blast. Even if you don't, like, the whole process was fascinating. It was so much fun. That's cool. Um, and look, if you don't take a risk, you'll never know, you know? And yeah. I, I, it was out of my comfort zone, but I still took the risk. And I am so glad I did. Regardless of, like, what happened after, I would have been happy I didn't expect to get every round. I was shocked, right? Like every round I was surprised because you're talking about really good talent. Like you're going up against a lot of really serious talent. And um, I'm really like kind of just like blown away by like the whole process and how it just 
really pushed me out of my comfort zone from day. I mean, one. you crushed it on the show, man. You crushed it on Thank the you. show. Thank you. You did so well. You know, you got so many compliments. I mean, obviously there were some things that happened, right? It's the show. So everyone it's has the show. those moments, right? You know, they it's have the to make show. TV. Yeah. They have to make TV. Um, you know, I can't, I, I have some pretty strict rules about what I can say and not say, and I don't want to give out spoilers either. Cause that's not good internet etiquette, but <laughs> They have to make TV and, yeah. um, uh, you know, yeah, it's, it's tough. Well, you yeah. know, it's, it's <laughs> and it's, and you've got lights on you. There's you know, all, the, all these amazing chefs in front of you, like the, the tension just, you know, and the pressure yeah. from that alone. I, yeah. I, I mean, I, I just don't even know what I would, how I would handle that sort of situation. To well, and it's, never... it's very real. It, I mean, it's reality TV. So there's some, you know, by nature, there's certain things that are staged. Yeah, like that them. clock is real, right? Like the clock, the is, clock real. is real. You're, the you're time really is cooking. Real. I mean, oh yeah, when they have happening. like those mystery boxes and you have to cook, you know, you don't know what you're going to cook. You don't have time to plan it. They taught us nothing. There was no planning or or like here we'll let you practice this. No, 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 no. So, so you sort really of may, was, may have an idea of the of what's coming up. They might show you a technique, but that's false. That's a myth, right? Of of the show. They don't show you not even stuff. really. I mean, honestly, yeah. it's it's a lot more real. It if you didn't come prepared, you're not gonna make it. And that's yeah. part of why they layered you out, you know, kind of cut people a lot. Um, like I studied uh a lot before I went because as much as I thought you know that you never know everything about the food world, um, especially for me, is baking is not my um I've oh never God. worked in pastry, I've never Hate studied baking. pastry <laughs> you know it's not yeah you're either into it or you're not yeah and with being keto i certainly don't really bake regular things and um and uh so i studied for months before going to la like every i had a list pages long of like every dough every wow any anything that you can think of and memorize the formulas like i studied my that's smart once that's smart, and it helped man. because the keto yeah. guy, like I won like the pie baking challenge or the, the target 10. Cause I had, <laughs> I, I had memorized that. the perfect pie crust from scratch. Like I knew what I was doing. And I remember in that challenge, Gordon being like, like on, on the mics, like, yo, Michael looks like he, you know, he's doing this pro. He knew to chill his butter. He knew to, buy, and, I, and, and I ended up winning the challenge. The keto Look guy who doesn't bake won yeah. the pie challenge. Cause I studied. Yeah. I learned other it. things. Yeah, absolutely. No, that's smart, man. That's a, and that's just a good insight for anybody looking to try out for the show, right? And Definitely. right, it, it's also this myth I've also heard of you you can't have worked in a restaurant or you can't be a professional Wrong. chef or something. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> that is a myth. Okay. About um I'm un, I'm untrained. I have never been to culinary school. I've never formally um, like been in, a, uh, worked in like a, a, a formal restaurant kitchen in the sense of like, you know, as a chef de cuisine or anything like that. Um, but I would say more than half of the contestants have worked in restaurants as I have, or, um, or many had been to culinary school. The, the, the master chef is, uh, explained as, as like, you know, um, home cooks, but the truth yeah. is, is that, we can't be currently working in restaurants. Got so, it. So um, at the time I had left the restaurant business when I was 25. And at the time um, I was working in real estate. So I was not working as a chef. So um, they do verify that you are not making money as a chef. Um, but okay. I think that's fair. That's still most, fair. most do have some uh, training, schooling yeah. or history in a restaurant. Um you know, catering, any of it. Like I, there's a, there was a big range of, of where people got their talent. Um, but there's a, you know, I like this kind of myth busting thing we're doing right now. Any other reality TV myths you want to ask me? <laughs> Cause this is kind of cool. Cause I learned a lot out there. <laughs> yeah. I look, I have another one. Absolutely. So like when you're set up to partner, right. With the partner, mm -hmm. none of that is, I mean, that's all real, right? You're not, pre-gaming it or you know I, I don't know i mean it just like that's really what's happening you know in the yeah, moment really what they're happening. showing you okay yep, so that what really you're screaming happening. back and forth to each other and all of very that. real wow 
Wow. Yeah, very those, those are the and, most and, interesting parts to the show to me. Those are like And the the timing shocked me how real it was going to be. So um you know, when they say you have 45 minutes or I think that when I uh, was sent home we had like 45 minutes to cook seven dishes from around the world or something with a partner and uh it was it was real and we didn't get any planning or training and basically um when they revealed the the platter that had like the seven dishes um they were like you have 60 seconds to taste everything and everybody runs up and starts like grabbing things off the table and tasting it. i didn't even get to taste it all because everybody's <laughs> fighting each other wow um and then they're like all right get in your line and they start counting down and it's just like wow. we just had to run i mean it was wow so there's no break the part, there to like no, okay wow. no i think this is this is the part where i was kind of trying to say um they have to make good tv in the sense that um i felt like master chef didn't necessarily and i shouldn't say this about master chef I, I think all cooking shows want a certain amount of chaos sure of course it's good i TV. think i think yeah, I think if everybody just like was calmly nailing their dishes and that's boring. I go to the restaurant to see cooks <laughs> in the kitchen running like yeah. a well-oiled machine. Yeah, you know. so they they didn't train us. Um, they didn't uh, give us time to prepare because I, you know, I think they wanted to really just see what would happen. <laughs> so it's real. It is reality uh, in that sense. Yeah, um, but I also that's, think that. Oh. Sometimes you'll watch the show and if you dare get into the Reddit hole of like seeing what people think about contestants and stuff like that, there's people that I, from the show that are super talented, great cooks, um, but the environment just didn't work for them. Sure. Uh, because of the stress like an and the time limits and yeah, there's right. just, some, it didn't work for them. Uh, similarly, kind of the opposite. There's people that I, in real life from my cast that I don't necessarily think are serious cooks um but they just kept it cool and like vibed in the environment if that makes yeah. sense sure. um well there's and, the competition and, well. and then there's cooking right mm -hmm. it's like it's still a competition so if you play that right if you right there's just a different angle to it uh, in some it's ways different. Yeah, it, it, that, that's different. fascinating though to hear. Yeah, that, that is. I mean, fascinating there's people there who did who did well that if you put them behind a line in a kitchen would fall apart. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But they, but yeah. they were great in that mode. Yeah, um, totally get it. And, you know and vice you versa, know, probably. And vice versa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, totally. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I, I think it was a really cool experience. I would love to like, kind of have the chance to do it again in the sense that uh, I went there very much focused on the food. So I studied yeah. the food, I studied the craft, but that was only about 50% of my job there. The other 50% was, uh, was being on camera. And that was something that I had never done before. And so I think that may have affected me because all the cameras and all that and the talking talking to gordon while you're cooking and all that um it adds it's just it interrupts you right you're just like yeah, i'm just trying to like yeah. yeah i always wonder that too when i'm watching i'm like you know is that are they filming that later or something you know what i mean because oh, sometimes no. yeah, you know no. how it is uh but no that's really in the moment they're really interrupting you and you're just like damn i, I really got to get these eggs boiled you know yeah and if you stop thumb. cooking while they're talking to you like there's also a producer behind the camera that's like kind of like yelling things at you so like you know i'm sitting there cooking and then gordon comes up and you're like <laughs> uh and the producer's like keep cooking keep cooking and you're like like people are screaming at you and there's a hundred things going on and there's 40 cameras and 200 staff and like different i mean it's, wow it's holy cow nuts yeah it is that sounds absolute nuts. chaos Absolutely. Sounds like chaos. a gladiator arena, yeah. right? You're just like in uh -huh. there. With yeah. The and then of course there's like the last layer of all this, which is the, the the emotional or just sort of the stress of feeling like I can't screw anything up. It's like this pressure of like, this is my one shot. Every episode that we filmed, I got one step closer and you start to taste the prize, you know, you're like, sure. holy shit, I could actually win a quarter million dollars. Like this could change my life. And you you can't sleep. You can't think, you know, and 
I wow. think all of that emotional piece and the camera work and everything else except the food was my challenge. Uh, I would say that, yeah. and I'm pretty self-critical, so I don't say this lightly, but I think from a culinary perspective, I was among the most prepared, um, but I was probably among the least prepared for the TV part of it, for everything yeah. else. So what would you do differently if you went back? Would you, how would you attack that side of it differently? Ooh, interesting question. Cause I try not to generally in my life think backward, you know? Um, but not, uh, not that time. Just like, uh, let's say they, let's say they called you okay. today and they're like, you're yeah, coming back today. You're I think right, I've already back. done it. I think that I just through like Instagram, YouTube, uh, doing some of this press stuff that I've been doing the last year, Hallmark channel cooking demos and things on TV. I feel already that I am 10 X better uh, at the other stuff than I was when I was there. So my so comfort they, of being on camera. That, that's what it is. Your comfort of being on the camera. I got you. Okay. I yeah. understand. Yeah. I just get little it. I things. Totally like get you, I just, just yeah. getting out of your own head. Um, you know, I think just the comfort of, of being, are you set. worried about the other contestants while you're cooking? Are you looking around? Are you, you trying to time. see like, okay, I've always Not wondered really. that you don't have time. That would you be my downfall. Time. That would be my downfall because I'd be like, where are they at? What, what's going on over here? You have your own little station. And oh, that smells good. Who's cooking that? Oh, yeah, shit. yeah. I better, I better change. Honestly, it, it ha you're so overwhelmed with like your own thoughts. <laughs> um, I didn't really have time. Now that yeah. kicks in as soon as the clock ends and you're standing there and you're like looking around and you're okay. like, that looks like shit. That looks yeah. amazing. <laughs> like, you know, then you're like, oh, um, yeah. That's, that's when things really take off is, is yeah. right when the clock ends and you're like, you know, they literally force you to like put your hands up. So, you so that is real to right. That clock is, that is real. Well, that's it's all it. real. There's no more. You it's cannot all touch that yeah. thing. <laughs> I mean, that's it. So, okay. There's I'll no... say, and I don't, I, you know, again, um, I, I think the only thing that isn't real per se is that by the time your food is getting tasted, it's, it's typically cold. It's typically been. I, I get that totally. That, that's, that's totally that I is, mean, it's still a show, so like that makes sense. Well, right? it just that, takes that, a long. The process takes, takes a long time to do everything. They got to re rack the cameras and hundred um, percent. I totally get but, all that. Line but, everybody up. Get the marker set. Like right. Like yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That makes and sense. it takes. You know what we see the edited version. Um, you get a lot more judging than you see on on camera typically. Yeah. Um. So. Ooh. Uh. You know, like they might show. Gordon say one or two sentences to you on the on the episode but of course like they're tearing it apart good or yeah. bad they're they're digging into it and you're getting there's three judges you're getting three opinions they might only show one or two so there is a, a tad bit of um uh, the time stretches a lot more than you sure. think so if you're the sure. last one to get tasted you could be sitting there for 45 minutes while everybody's getting through their judging. Can you hear everybody else up there getting judged? Oh, Can yeah. You hear, you hear it all. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. You're there for okay. all of it. Yeah. Okay. And you're sitting well, I know there you're there, but I didn't know with the distance. I mean, I know they have a mic on, but does that mean you can hear them? You know, I didn't know if you could hear what they're saying about the other dishes. It's, oh, that's interesting. It's, uh, the room's not, it, it looks, the room is the size of that it looks like. So, um, you know, and it's silent when we're filming because we're, you know. Yeah. So you so can you, hear what they're saying. Yeah, you can, you God, that's it. tough. That's so you crazy. Hear everybody's judging and yeah, uh, and the whole thing. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it was a, it was an it was like just talking about it. It it was wild, you know. And yeah. now it's since I actually filmed it, it was a couple of years, but it's still like so vivid in my mind. Let's talk about it's how so far, far how to what episode you got. Uh, just over halfway through, right? Of the about season? halfway through the like, season. Yeah. Yeah. It's halfway awesome, through the man. Season. Holy cow! Yeah. So awesome. Yeah. I mean, holy yeah, cow. it's cool. Actually, right. I'll, I'll show you this right next to me. I, I keep this right next to me. I don't even open it, but this is the journal I took with me oh, um, that's so awesome. while I was there. And I would sit in my hotel room and like, um, you know, plan dishes and like, just like I had written down formulas for desserts, curds and souffle and classic dude, white cake. And just like dude, that is so I had cool. This whole thing memorized macaron um, formulas, like just sit sitting there like studying anytime we weren't on set i was studying i feel like you Wild. could publish that as like something i don't know maybe it's yeah. too personal i don't know what I'm, i don't know i don't know what i'm allowed to yeah that's true to, like later like there's a lot sure. of rules like i can't 
obviously I can't give out like, of course, um, what happened offset and like, be, of course, you know, there's certain secret stuff that just like we signed that we're not allowed to talk about. Hey, if I ran a show, I'd have that shit too. You know, yeah, what I'm saying? yeah, I'd be, yeah. I would do the same thing. No, I totally get yeah. it. Um, but the, everybody we work with is so I'm still in touch with a bunch of people from the show. Um, that's awesome. Both the cast and crew and Gordon, all this stuff. Like we all bond over it. You know, we're there for weeks that's at awesome. a time. We are living in, you know, living together basically. So we're, um, we really bonded. I mean, there, there's some cast members I literally talk to every day, year, two years later, wow. every day. Yeah. Wow. Any chance of like it, maybe a collaboration with any of these chefs doing something or. I have done a couple things. I've done some Instagram stuff. I did cook in Dallas a pop up with uh, two other people. We did like a, a there you a go. Tasting, That's what I'm talking a tasting, about. Yeah. yeah, like a four course tasting dinner. Nice. It was a year ago though. That's awesome. Um, uh, yeah, COVID obviously Dallas. has yeah, I mean, affected a lot of things. I had planned on doing more more cooking in person stuff, um, but COVID shut it down, and also the book deal like. That was a dream for me. So once I had been approached by the publisher, I went all in. Like we've, you yeah. know, as we started the conversation, I had to hone in to a whole new skill set. I'm not a writer. Yeah. I'm not a photographer, but I am now, but I wasn't a yeah. year ago. Look how far and, uh, you've come, man, right? Like look how much you've challenged yourself in all these arenas uh, to come out on top like this. This is awesome. Thanks. It's not, it's, it's not easy. <laughs> that's why, I, like so I said awesome. earlier, there's days where I'm like, well, if it was easy, it wouldn't job. be as cool, right? But yeah. if it was easy, it wouldn't be as cool, though. You know, yeah. it wouldn't Thanks. be. I appreciate that. Like, right? If you just got some like lottery tickers and you just had it all, it would be like, well, okay, you have yeah. it all. But it, it's like, no, I earned this. All. I built it all, right? That that's yeah. cool, man. That's yeah. that's like it's well, inspiring to yeah. other people listening to this that have these desires and goals and dreams because there are a lot more people out there like that now than there have ever been so to hear mm -hmm. something like this is gonna yeah. you know push somebody well look I, I gotta say i think that a lot of people see social media they see whatever whether you're in the food world or not i think they think like um you know i could i could become an influencer and not work at, you know blah 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 and i think what i want to say is it it you have to put in the work. It doesn't yes. matter what trade you're in. You have to put in the work. You know, I have devoted my entire life to this. Um, and I think that's what it takes. You know, if you're starting, I look at it as starting a, you know, a new career and um, MasterChef gave me a, a step in the right, you know, gave me a jump start in that career for sure. And I'm grateful for that. But, um, you know, just being a master chef is not enough to make a career in food. I promise you. And if you look back historically at shows like Top Chef and Master Chef, very few of the contestants, even if they won sometimes, actually really do anything. The ones that do, it's because they put in the work. Um, you still got to work at it. You still got to work the long days and, and really sharpen your knife and like, dig in um i did not win but um i got a, a book deal i got a pro like i didn't even ask for it you know i think that i have really focused on creating real food for real people and finding a voice in that and you know working at it and so you know i really do want to say like whether in food or not if you want something keep going, put in the work. It is not going to happen overnight. I quit my job over two years ago and basically made no money for the last two years. Um, but I want this, you know, it's, it's a decision. It's a sacrifice. And, um, you know, I've just like grinded to make this work. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think that that's generally what it takes to make it in, in this industry. Um, especially now in, in the space of like, you know, in the, in the social media world, whatever, like you have to grind. I know people who are super successful on YouTube and, um, and Instagram and have, you know, quarter million or 500,000 people followings or million followers on YouTube. And now they're making six figures, but they started their channels seven years ago and made nothing for like the first three of those years just made nothing. Um, 
It cost them money. Or, yeah, cost lost money or worked all day at their job and then made videos all night. Yeah. Didn't sleep. You know, what I, like that is what it takes. And, and I think people, it's so, you know, you see these success stories, you see people all over Instagram, all over YouTube, um, you know, with their fancy cars and stuff. But like most cases, it they started those accounts like in early YouTube days, like 2009, 2010. And like they're 10 years into this and are now making six figures. Yeah. Um, and that's that's a hustle that like I don't I was not expecting, you know, you have to just have fun with it and um, and keep going, you know, and keep going. I, it's the same thing if I were to open if I had opened a restaurant. I wouldn't expect to really make any money for a couple of years. Even if I did, I'd probably be reinvesting it. You know, it's like, mm-hmm. I'm starting a new career and, um, and I'm just working hard at it and like hoping for the next gig, hoping for the next, you know, private event gig that I can make a couple hundred bucks and pay for my week, <laughs> you know, yeah, uh, hoping for the next book deal so that I can write for another year, hoping for whatever it takes, you know? You've been that, doing stuff on Instagram too, right? Like classes and yeah, but it's all free. I don't charge for yeah. any of it. I don't do sponsorships. Yeah. Um, yeah. I uh, I really just want to share my food first. But it um, builds your brand as a whole, you know, and it builds brand, your followers. Yeah. And and these free classes typically like ninety, hundred people will show up, and that's more meaningful to me than twenty people, fifteen people paying twenty bucks or whatever. And like, um, I I would rather kind of touch more lives right now and focus on building a brand um, than, than make a couple hundred bucks. It's just my mentality. Um, This isn't about money for me. It's just not, not today, at least. Sure. It's just not. And, and I've worked, I've worked really hard and and thought really hard about this because you see a lot of people in, in the food space um, jump into Instagram sponsorships jump into paid content and advertise, you know, sponsored stuff on Instagram to make a couple hundred bucks. And and I get it. I respect the hustle. Um, but I think there's risk in that. I think there's, it's not something you believe in, right. Or product. You risk losing your your authenticity risk. Even if you don't lose your authenticity, your audience can be alienated by, by, overly selling stuff and then they don't know what's real and what's not yeah that's true i definitely unfollow uh, some accounts if that's all they do if they that's just all push they do selling stuff right you're just like dude yeah. i don't i'm done that's all it is yeah absolutely yeah and i'd 100%. like to believe that pays off uh because the the community that i talk to on my instagram account i respond to every message i engage with every human being who wants to engage with me um because they're they're real people to me i don't see it as like you know just a number to make they absolutely are um and it's 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 a decision that i've made that um that i want to build a real community around this keto food i really want to help people uh kind of succeed and find their own kind of uh positivity around their health and their wellness Um, you know, when I, it's not all about weight loss, but when I, I kind of found my confidence and found how much did you lose when you initially did the 80 something pounds? Wow. That's phenomenal, man. Yeah. Although I'm, I I have a little quarantine 15 that I got to (laughs) like, we all got that. (laughs) Everybody's got it. Doug. Don't even Uh, trust me. My neighbor reminds me every day of mine. (laughs) <laughs> my clothes still fit but it's always uh, i'm like i see a little the cheeks back. right yeah the cheeks yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but generally for for a couple of years i've been able to keep it off and and i don't really diet anymore i don't count calories i don't do any of that but it, like the keto vibe Stick the keto lifestyle has yeah. helped me yeah keep it off yeah. but um yeah it's about 80 83 pounds i think is the exact number. It's amazing it's amazing uh, i'd love to get to 100 one day just as like phase two kind of polish off the last 20 um but i'm happy right now and i think that's all that matters right absolutely well you've been working your ass off too man don't forget yeah. that i don't think i ever want to be skinny you know i, I don't know i'm skinny i've been skinny my whole life i i don't know another life so i can't i can't really say anything right this is just my life i don't know it's uh, people always <laughs> say that to me why are you so skinny i i'm just i don't know this is just this is me. <laughs> 
I, I did a, say, I right? did a, like, um, <laughs> I did a live cooking thing for, uh, for Houston the other day on there. I saw it. I show. saw both of them. I yeah, saw it when you she was like, she was like, too. yeah, she was like, you know, they say, don't, you know, don't trust the skinny chef. And I was like, well, I, yeah. I don't consider myself a skinny chef. You can still trust me. <laughs> I'm still like 200. So like, I'm not skinny, but, that um, I, I feel better. I'm healthy. My, my medical health is like on point, you know, my lab work and everything. Keto's been yeah. great for me. That's awesome. Um, Let's, so I'm, yeah, I'm going to keep riding. I'm going to keep riding it. You're going to gain, you know, you're going to get people on this. I mean, I'm going to cook stuff from this. Like I look at this and I don't think diet. Does it make sense? I just see a cookbook. That's the point. You nailed it. I mean, like, I dude, like wine braised short ribs and things like that. And it, like, it's nothing about diet food. Um, it's just a cookbook, dude, with amazing freaking recipes in this thing. Right. Like that's all cookbook. I see. It's just yes, a cookbook it. with good food. Uh, you know, that that's just just there to enjoy. And and like, I, I definitely want to make sure that my food isn't only good to keto people, if that makes Abs- sense. A hundred percent. That's what I mean by it's just a Minimum cookbook. I didn't mean that as just a cookbook. Yeah, I no, like that, I know. You know what no, I mean? You're, you're exactly yeah. on point. Yeah. yeah. I've, I actually had a lot of the recipes tested by friends and family, none of which who are keto. And I will not accept it, um, you know, because you find things like that, right? Like a so keto cupcake or you know you might have had like a vegan cupcake or whatever and you're like I've had I mean, it's tons. good for or, vegan I've had tons of vegan not, stuff yeah 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 but but there are good vegan things and then there's things that are good for vegan does that make sense uh, yeah, uh, yeah absolutely <laughs> um absolutely. yeah so thank you for saying that i appreciate that you caught on to that because i mean that's really why i called it new keto because it, it's a new approach it's not about diet food or things trying to be things you know it's yeah. not like uh, I don't know, uh, keto spaghetti trying to be regular spaghetti. It's just good food that kind of is secretly keto. That's- it just happens to be keto, right? Like yeah, that's, it happens- that's it. it it's, that's yeah. not even the the hero of the dish is that it's keto. That it has nothing to right, do. In it's fact, just, it's, it's like a there. side note. Yeah, it's just yeah. like, and, and yeah. it's keto. And it's good for you. That's like, oh, okay, awesome. That's All like right, just cool. a plus, right? That's even, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It makes it so much cooler. No, that's exciting. What What are some of the best uh, for for some of the listeners? What What are some of your uh, maybe a couple holiday recipes? Because this will go out here before the holidays, so maybe a couple holiday recipes you like in here, or could be holiday ish. Does that put you on the spot? Holiday recipes. Uh, good. Put Sorry. me on the spot. I should I should uh, know the answers to these things. Yeah, um, you should have a couple in mind. A couple holiday dishes. Uh, uh, you know, off off the bat, the uh, Brussels sprout this... gratin. The gr- that's a side dish, Ooh, but you just like, do it in yeah. a big cast iron, love and it. um, it is so good. I love that one. The mm. Brussels sprout gratin is a really nice side dish and goes really well on a holiday table. Um, and and it's the kind of dish where even non Brussels sprout people will not be able to stop eating it it's totally i love brussels creamy. sprouts personally um so i'm gonna i would love it no problem yeah. but yeah for somebody that doesn't that's how i make brussels sprouts too what page is that uh 102 102 and i kind of um made it easy by uh you can buy brussels sprouts pre-shaved oh, 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 yeah. now you know so like nobody yeah. even has to do all the prep of like if you sure. want to cutting off the little end and cut, it. slicing it and all that and shaving yeah. it like yeah. one of the things that i really try to do at the book beyond just good food uh, i would say there was two other kind of goals that i had but one of which was making sure that anybody could cook it that like this is not a book for advanced home cooks only um Really. And like, that's why, like, there's certain things that maybe a real chef would like look at me and say, like, who the hell would make something with pre shaved Brussels sprouts, like in a restaurant, you know, (laughs) but, but it's real. This is for real people to make at home and like to get home from work and to get home and actually make a dish. Yeah. And like, if if you're a purist and you want to shave your fresh Brussels, if you want to pull them off the freaking vine, go for it. You know, (laughs) Uh, no one's stopping you. Um, yeah. But I want people to make my food. I didn't want one of these cookbooks that, you know, you ju- it just looks good and then you never make anything out of Dude, it. Dude, I have a ton of cookbooks, right? I have, honestly, it's like every cookbook I have is pretty much, pretty much uh, yeah. you know, like that. Yeah. Where you don't want to make it. I have cookbooks from like some of these, you know, awesome, famous chefs and stuff. But there's no way you're going to really sit there and like, uh, you know, take three days. Because that's how it works in a restaurant. You know, you're you're letting things 
there's there's components to every dish and yes, it spreads out true. you're letting things ferment and you're letting this marinate and this you know whatever uh sure. reduction and it's like 16 elements or whatever so that's not practical for you know for people and that's that yeah. goes back to what i was saying about building the community around what i do and making sure that the people that i interact with online or the people who pick up my book um can actually make it and not spend three days to make a dish. Um, so I think that that was really important to me, like actually making food that anybody could make regardless of your skill set, but still kind of make sure it has a little dash of foodie in it, a little dash of a little creativity. Elevation. Yeah. Yeah. Just It'll little, be nice when they enough. take a picture of it, right. And post on Instagram, the friends are like, yeah. oh, shit, you made yeah. that. It's like, yeah. okay. Yeah. No, that's great, man. That's smart. Honestly, this is a cookbook for today like right like this is an approachable so. cookbook for for today yeah i hope I love so that, man the the pound cake is awesome and i did a, a i saw some pictures cake. of of some people actually making that on your yeah, instagram that's, yeah that's a ridiculous really, really good delicious. one and i kind of broke it down like the dinners are broken down into uh two sections i call it weeknight dinners versus dinners to impress um what it really means is like kind of easy one pot vibes versus like i'm all about those night you know, date night kind of stuff where you do want to sit around, but like that dinners, the, the weeknight dinners is just full of like kind of your one pot skillet meals and things that are just like coming home on a Tuesday and you just got to get dinner on the table. Um, some kind of easier stuff. I mean, it's got desserts. It's got side dishes. It's got entrees, right? It's got for sure for all different seasons, you know, different proteins, yeah, for sure. Heavy, light stuff, stuff to impress, you know, guests coming over, um, yeah, a date, yeah. uh, just for yourself, like you said, a family. I mean, it's, yeah, look at this. It's a little bit of everything. Yeah, it literally has Yeah, different, a little bit of you know, uh, ethnic stuff in here too, man, which is great, right? Yeah. You're not, it's not, it's, it's literally, God, this is so good, man. Well no, explained. I said I, I said I had two goals. The second goal First goal is making sure anybody could cook it. The other thing was like, I kind of snuck in culinary lessons throughout the book. Um, Love that. You know, like this this um, filet mignon. Ugh, there we go. Uh, it kind of oh, secretly teaches somebody just how to perfectly sear a filet and how to do a balsamic reduction yourself. Ah, uh, nice. Uh, you know, without having to buy the sugary stuff in the bottle. Sure. Uh, you, know, you, you literally just cook down balsamic, but people don't yeah. know that. Yeah, you know, people don't know true. that necessarily, um, and so I like to think of this book as a little bit of a of a crash course. You know, like the scallop dish, I break down in detail how to just perfectly sear a scallop. Get that sear, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. How to do a crispy yeah. skin sa salmon and build a brown butter, and uh, you know, stuff like that. It's it's like a secret culinary class. If you kind of cooked through the book by the end you'd know a lot of techniques, and that was kind of my awesome. other secret secret goal here was like. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, people can make these recipes, but uh, if they learn how to sear a scallop, like they're they're good to go. You know, it's something that a lot of home home cooks think is is something you can only pay thirty dollars for at a restaurant. But <laughs> scallops are actually really easy to, to cook, sure, and delicious, and and a really nice way to impress. You know, you have a date or something, and you sear some scallops at home. That you know, <laughs> I thought one hundred. You're going to close the deal. <laughs> Absolutely. I love it. <laughs> I mean, hundred percent. I love it. No, I love that. It's got that underlying message uh, to learn some things, you know, a little bit of something from each dish, right? A little technique here, a little technique there. Yeah. Braising, oh, awesome, grilling, man. like just different techniques. I threw in those. Uh, some of them have these pro tips. I'll see if I can find one, but these little. Oh, I saw. Um, I've seen the pro tips. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Little pro tips mixed in the kind of again like little lessons um yeah yeah awesome. i i really did try to put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into this um it shows there's no you. doubt about it i mean 100 percent. again it's just got a little bit of everything in here that god there's so many too how many recipes are in this thing 65 65 which is actually although some you get of your them money's worth this is, you yeah, know, you some get of them do have more than that, though. Like, like I said, like some re like different components or sauces in it that other books might have broken apart. Um, I see. Uh, 
but yeah, it, it is 65 complete recipes. God, dude, uh, this uh, spice carrot cake. I can't, I've literally flipped to it four times accidentally. I can't it's stop looking you. at it. It's calling, it's calling me. This yeah, is, calling. oh my God, but I don't want to make it. I just want somebody to make it for me and I eat it. <laughs> <laughs> funny i'm lazy sometimes look i see some uh, dishes i'm especially like with baking i don't bake all the time i just not a good i've you know tried a lot man i used to even make my own bread for boca and um it just took a long time to get that right and whew, just it was very frustrating i just remember it's the it's the most i get frustrated in the kitchen is when i'm trying to bake something and you know or i don't know take a stab well, at something you know I'll, different I'll, and Oof. I'll tell you the dessert section took me as long as everything else combined. Wow. Because of, because of what I you're believe saying. It. Yeah. Um, develop. I mean, it's hard enough to bake, but developing baked goods and every time messing with the formulas and trying it, it, again, it takes so long to find out you screwed up. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of trial and error. Right? The desserts. Yeah, it's a lot of trial. Uh, and error. I by the end of the dessert, I also screwed up because I saved the desserts for last because I took the approach of like, you know what? I don't know if you remember, like back in high school, standardized knock tests. You're like, just knock out the things you know and then go back to the hard. Oh questions. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was when I went into this book. I'm like, oh, sh where do I start? You know? So I was like, all right, let me start with the shit I know. And then I'll work towards like, you know, the hardest stuff at the end. So I think I started with the sauces. It kind of started with the easiest stuff and left the desserts. And I'll tell you, man, after like a few months of this by the desserts, I was like, oh my God, these should have been first when I was most fresh, you know, motivated and fresh. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, no matter what industry you're in there, um, the burnout can be very real. And I took, I took a pause for a week or two and then I was like, all right, I'm ready to do this now. Like I'm ready yeah. to go. And I put yeah. like, that's what I'm saying. I, that didn't stop me from, uh, putting the love into the desserts that they needed to. And actually that some of those desserts I'm like most proud of, like the, the pound cake, that key lime pie or key lime cheesecake is among my favorite things in the whole book. Um, you know, I did put love into that dessert section, but I should not have saved it for the end. I had to like, kind of like regroup, <laughs> take a break, get out of town for that. a few days and then come back. And I took probably a full month just to do a 10 the desserts. desserts. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, what's great to hear is look, you've done all the hard work for people. Okay. You've done all the trial and error. You've done all the hard work, the heartache, right? You've been through it all. And it's now it's on the paper. They get the mountain peak, right? That you get that, right? Like the, you did all the, the journey. It's like, here you go. This is, yeah, I, have I, to go suffered, that. I suffered yeah. for everybody. <laughs> you suffered for everybody here, you know, to make that happen. I mean, that's how dishes develop. That's how great dishes do. You go try something at a place. It's like, they didn't just pop it out one day. I promise you it developed. No People tasted it. They refine, they go back. You do yeah. this, you do that. Yeah. It takes, yeah. it takes a yeah. long time. So yeah, yeah and absolutely. That's what, I mean, even restaurants who change their menu seasonally, they're deving those, the new season, like two months ahead. Absolutely. You pretty much start as soon as you finish the yeah, new, you're yeah, already yeah, starting yeah. Exactly. on the next one. You're starting the next one, you know, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. You know, I think that's why, like I I've done some, I've been to some Michelin star places and stuff. And I don't know if you've ever felt this way. Like some of these places that have a, a new menu every day and stuff. And uh, I'm not always thoroughly impressed. I'll, I, sometimes I feel like conceptually it can be rushed. There's stu stunning food, stunning approach brilliant uh conceptualization but um I, I sometimes i feel like it lacks just like the yummy that i want well of course um, well you're talking about a different dining experience um yeah yeah it's just a different experience you know it's it's uh yeah it, it, that's all it is and and the people on the other end know that too the, the restaurant mm -hmm. knows that right for they, sure, for they're, sure. they probably know you're probably going to go get a kebab after you eat there <laughs> exactly get a shawarma yeah. plate yeah you're probably you gonna know, go I, get something filling at, yeah, right? i mean yeah, that's just yeah, how yeah. it <laughs> you know it's it's one of the things that i fell in love with about austin uh is that i think austin appreciates eating something out of a, a paper boat on a picnic table outside of a food truck more than anywhere else in the country yeah. and you'll find some fantastic 
fantastic chefs and restaurateurs whose food trucks are just tastier than what you're going to get at a fancy restaurant any day of the week. Yeah. I love that about Austin. I think like, you know, especially moving from the East coast, um, you know, where I live my whole life. Um, the, the culinary scene in most of the, of, of the big cities on each coast, I think sort of has this regard, this respect for the, for the high-end restaurants and like, yeah, Austin has some amazing high-end restaurants, but you all like, you know, you, of course, you, you know, Tyson or whatever with Uchi and some of these things like that. Um, but you can just like, nothing is like a, a good tray of barbecue or an awesome fucking food truck, you know, uh, that Absolutely. kind of thing. Some great tacos I love, somewhere. I fell in, yeah, I fell in love with that about Austin, probably Texas in general. Right. I don't know if you agree with me or what I'm sure. I, I, I mean, I'm the food truck guy. As a you food know, truck, I'm yeah. the, fu- I'm the food say. truck guy uh, of the, you know, here. So yeah, I mean, a hundred percent. I heard that a lot uh, of, of, you know, my food sometimes and not, not that my food was wonderful or anything, but just that's what people would say. And I know the reason why it's because I come from restaurants as well. And I've done both a Ram own food truck for five years. So yeah, it's basically just comes down. You, you can give more time to the food. You, you don't have anything else to worry about in a food truck, but the food. No, but the food. I mean, there's other and stuff also, to worry you're about, not right? But in you're that, just like, right. this is and all you're I not got. in that burning hot food truck for, for 12 hours unless you freaking love it. I think that's I mean, part of it, too. That's 100%. That's, exa- you know, that's a great point, I too. I mean, I have worked in, a, in restaurants where the chefs were just grumpy and burnt out and didn't give a shit. It's most of the chefs I work for. To be honest with you, yeah, um, and I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I think burnt it out. That That's what it comes from, Bur- just being burnt out. The burnout is real. It's the real as real. hell, man. You, in our industry, so real. It's real. It's hard. And I get not, it. I burnt out. I'm done. I stepped yeah. away after you know Me ten too. plus years. You know, I stepped away, and I, here I am on the Me podcast too. or rolling into season three for 2021. Like, it's not that I won't ever go back to it, but I don't know. <laughs> you know. I don't see myself working in a restaurant ever again. I'll be honest, unless I own it. Yeah. I don't even think I would go I, I w- there again uh, for sure. But yeah, I, I feel you. I, I might regret it, but it's, it's just a goal. It's like a, a bucket list. I wouldn't mind doing me. some pop-ups. Yeah, it's fun. I do like the private Love chefing because basic, like, yeah. basically I don't have to take any gig. I don't want, um, yeah. you, you know, I control. can, I can, uh, yeah. And it's, you know, a couple of months or whatever. And, and I get to really like still feel like a chef, you know, still get to cook and put food in front Dude, of people. hundred percent. Um, because, because, uh, uh, writing recipes from home has a certain element of loneliness. <laughs> that sounds so sad. That's yeah. not, I, mean, I don't mean it is sadness, but you know, you, like, nobody, gets to it. <laughs> nobody gets to enjoy the food I'm making uh, at home. So Michael hasn't fun. left this room in six months, y'all, <laughs> just so y'all know. He's just I sleep been under the lights right here. Yeah, he sleeps under the lights. No, no, but I get that. I mean, I, I look, I get it. That you know, the one. You, this is the one thing I miss is when somebody would eat my food and 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 tell me how great it was. Mm. Yeah, so I miss that moment that I could that I a high. I'll describe it as a high. It is. It is. Right, because I've done drugs. Okay, I admit it. I've done drugs. Yeah, and it's a high like that of like yeah. Whoa, that feels really, dude. You have no idea how much yeah, hard work I put I in to, for you to eat that. Yeah, you have no idea what it took. Yeah. Like, like a flash happens in my head of me stuffing shit in my truck to head, you know, from Restaurant Depot down thirty five, stuck in traffic to get to the truck to unload to prep to di- to to this guy called in and he can't make it and and the propane guy's late and the you know <laughs> gray water's backing up and this guy's coming up from the bar and hey, do you guys mind doing this for us and and an order comes in on Grubhub and I could just go on and on about pro- right. But then that guy saves it. He just says he eats a bite of your taco and he that says, was, um, best thing I ever awesome. ate. Or whatever. Yeah. Best yeah, thing I ever yeah. ate or best taco or God, that's it's amazing. Yeah. And it made his night too. Cause he's like, wow. in the night on a great feeling and you both feel good and you start in it. That's enough to make you do that all over again. So 100%. I do miss that. That one little, you know, 100%. I do miss that. Yeah. Well, I, I, I get it completely. And I, I would say that, uh, 
I have found the middle ground in that, um, you know, when I see people on Instagram, you know, put showing me the dish they made at their table or whatever. And it's the closest thing to that, that I can find from home. It's oh, still hundred percent. It's I get the that. closest thing. And that's why, um, writing recipes and, and all that has really become a passion of mine because it, I still get that same high. It's a different drug, yeah. <laughs> but it's yeah. the same high. Um, feel you. because I'm like, man, this still feels like I'm feeding people. And, um, and I do love that part of it. And, and that's why I'd love to do another book. I'd love to just keep doing this regardless of money and all that. This is just something I'm really like having a blast with. Um, yeah, that's so awesome. we'll see. Yeah, we'll that's see. Awesome. And, and look, this is the, this is the year of work from home, right? Yes. Um, and so absolutely. I feel really lucky that in, in, in a year where the restaurant industry is getting smashed, I yeah. found myself in a space where I could still work from home. That's um, awesome. And I'm very grateful for that. But, you know, if you're watching right now in Texas or not, go grab yourself some takeout from your play, favorite place. Like they need yes. it. Agreed. Uh, the, the restaurant industry is hurt. Agreed. So please, <laughs> if you yes. can, go get some. And don't go out. to McDonald's, people. That's what I tell. No, people. no, don't, no. Don't, Local don't restaurants. Go to McDonald's. Single location restaurants. Yeah. Uh, get some lunch. Get an appetizer for 10 bucks. But do what you can. Because like, there's not going to be small restaurants left in it. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be absolutely. Applebee's and McDonald's yeah. left if we don't help right absolutely. now. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Um, which could, is strange for me to say, because what I should be saying is like, go buy my book and cook from home. Well, do, do that, that too. too. Do that too. Yeah. Do both. Do both. You yeah, can do, do both. both. You can do both. You can you can do, we have to eat three times a day. Yeah, ex you know? exactly. Exactly. Uh, you <laughs> Eggs know, in and the look, morning. There's other people that out. have money. Okay. And I, I know lots of people like that. They got money. Mm -hmm. And I tell them all the time. Yeah. Hey, oh, crack open that wallet. Don't be stingy. And start ordering some stuff. You spend the money on other dumb stuff. You can absolutely, you know, support yeah. these other restaurants. Buy this book. You can make these dishes at home. And the money you save from this, you then turn around and buy some takeout. Yeah. Right. Yep. Which the these other would make a great this... gift, by the way. These would make a great oh, gift this year. Oh, for sure. For sure. Right. Because you're not going to turn them on to this new, this new yeah. word, which we didn't describe. I feel like we didn't describe that word at the beginning. Can we do that real quick? Keto. keto mean okay low, you've low listened to carb it all <laughs> is the low it's a low carb diet um that's the primary part of it you can you can control like on the throttle how you know why you're using keto but the the basis of it is you're getting rid of carbs and sugar Got so it. you're eliminating um almost all the sweet stuff uh flour bread potatoes and you're kind of sticking to meat and veggies Meat and veggies, yeah. meat and greens, that kind of thing. Seafood is fine. You can still have berries. You can still have some fruit within reason. Um, but it's really just a low carb, low sugar diet. And uh, it has amazing, amazing benefits in regards to, you know, met your metabolic health and your and weight loss, if that's where you want to go with it. Um, but, you know, without, without being preachy about it, I'm, 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 I'm here to cook. I'm not, I'm not a nutritionist. So, um, you know, you can do a lot of research and that's what I did. I researched it. I decided I wanted to lose weight. I researched it and found um, an app. I used an app called, um, Ooh, I should know the answer to that, but <laughs> it's like a, a tracking app and it's free. And, oh, it's called lose it. <laughs> I'm loading it. Now. Lose it. It's called lose it. And you, um, you know, you basically type in what you ate that day and it'll show you like your total carbs and fat and stuff. Oh, and that's you can, cool. You can, yeah, you can kind of like monitor how you do every day. Um, but I don't do that anymore. I only did that when I was in weight loss mode. Now now I'm just sort of intuitively keto. Uh, I just don't eat any sugar. I, I still cheat. I have cheat days. We all, you know, it's life. We got to live. Of course. We got to live. It's part of, part of life, right? You got to have, yeah, you got to have those. Live. It will make you more disciplined on the other days. It does. Yeah, it does. It's, it's basically gluten-free and sugar-free. Um, and, uh, but what I love about it is that unlike, uh, some of, you know, some of these other things, like, um, I don't know, weight watchers or things where you're kind of like forced to limit yourself. I think yeah. a lot of the stuff with keto, like you can eat a lot. You don't have to eat tiny portions to lose weight. That's what I like about it. Cause I, I want to eat, um, 
And so I think that's where I kind of found a home in it. Cause like, you know, I, I don't want to um, have like a little square of chick plain chicken and salad and like, no, like, you know, I want like ribs and brisket and cheese and eggs and all kinds of good stuff. So that's all on the table <laughs> very much so with keto so i mean that's a great yeah. selling point right for people listening to this they're like okay this is you got me i'm listening uh, <laughs> yeah. right it's like that's awesome no that's fantastic yeah. it's def- definitely a great gift especially for somebody who's like dabbling in keto but um like i said it's a it's a cool way to kind of just learn and 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 cook uh dinners that you know even if you make one keto dinner a week where you're not having the, the pasta and the bread dude, you'll feel better. I like, I don't mean that in a preachy way. Like you will feel better if you just have one or two dinners a week that don't have uh, bread or pasta. I, I'm telling you that alone, but you'll feel better. It's kind of cool. Like I just, I have tons of energy. I just feel good on keto, even though I'm not losing weight anymore. I just still feel great. So I mean, awesome. you know, I was talking That's to a awesome. guy yesterday who's, who's gluten free and, um, and, uh, for celiacs, it medically needs to be gluten free. Yeah. He's he's gonna try the book, and it's not keto, but um, I, I think he's pretty excited to kind of just try gluten free from a different approach. Sure, um, absolutely. You know, uh, yeah, I, I think it's it's awesome. It really worked for me. <laughs> That's awesome, man. No, I love that. Lo- I, you know, I think people are gonna be. This is gonna interest some people. There's no doubt. I mean, I, I would imagine every time you talk about it, that somebody gets interested from it. I mean, that's just, yeah. I mean, keto's in though, you know, there's no denying keto's hot. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, for good reason. I I read, I do read a lot. It works. uh, It works. Things about it. It does work. A lot of celebrities do keto now because they they all want to be skinny as possible and all that. Yeah. Um, Hollywood's not, not a nice place necessarily, (laughs) but Hey, I think Austin could be the new, I feel like everybody's we're moving get, to Austin. Yeah, here. we're getting there. I just read that Elon Musk is like buying a house here or something. Yeah, he moved here. He, he already moved. Yeah. It's not already did it. That's what you know. People like that, they're not going to tell you before they do. They're they've already bought the house. They've already got it done. And oh say, yeah, 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 I've, yeah, I've already I mean, my, I've been here three months. You know. Yeah, yeah. My assumption is he. I, I, I'm sure he's keeping his properties in California. He just probably wants that, like no state taxes or whatever. That's it. <laughs> like that's it. Now That's that he has a business here. here, he can, yeah, yeah, yeah. People like it's it's crazy. Yeah, people are like, oh, yeah, Texas. You know, everybody they want to come to Texas because it's great and this and that. I mean, Texas is. I love to, of course. It is great. Lone Star yeah. Plate. Okay, yeah, I love Texas. A uh, big fan of it, of course. But I don't <laughs> think that's a big reason of why a lot of these people are moving here. It's more just the the money they're going to save. Their business may be here, and on top of it. Okay, this is a cool city as well. Austin's a great exactly. City. Uh, I mean, you know. even for me, like you know, I'm I'm not even here two years yet, and um, one of the things that drew me here is it's affordable. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it's it's expensive downtown. Some people somewhere. might might say like, mm, I don't know, Michael, it's not very affordable uh, for me here. <laughs> it is when you've come from from the East Coast, like compared yeah. to like, DC, New York, you yeah. know, Philly, California, it is sure. half. Yes. Half. Yeah. I mean, that's I think, true. Uh, like, that's true. Uh, down, downtown is expensive in terms of like living and stuff, but um, Dallas is still, more expensive. Definitely, definitely, Dallas you know? is more expensive. It's still much more affordable to me than the Northeast by far. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, uh, it just is. You know, they do say New York rent uh, is potentially going and is going down because yeah, well, uh, New York's like dead. You know, so many people. <laughs> yeah, so many people that have left um and i get it right like so i think there's gonna be a weird moment where people are gonna be able to get some interesting apartments for you know yeah. like it's gonna it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting uh yeah uh, there. but, but i mean even here, here i i um i have a buddy who has an airbnb um that he like is a house they turned into an airbnb yeah. and he can't rent it right now nobody's coming the conferences are gone the business travel's yeah. gone nobody's coming here right now because like even for 2021 South by is going to be virtual this year. Um, you know, and any other, you know, they got a lot of other film fest and other stuff. It's you're right. It's all going to be even it's for heartbreaking though. It's just like the restaurant industry, the entertainment, the, the music industry is like, it's hurting. Yeah, absolutely. It's wild. Um, in, it's wild. In fact, uh, anybody in Austin listening right now, starting today, actually, I, I can't remember the time, 
but you can apply for live music venue um, aid. So anybody, I know that there's owners and stuff that listen to the show. So if you have a live music venue or, you know, a buddy that has a live music venue, I'm sure you've heard about it. Just in case you haven't, um, you know, tell or go, if you're listening, comment on your favorite music venues place, let them know that this is out, tell them to, to get on it. They're give, Austin's giving out aid right now um, That's amazing. To, to hopefully help uh, with some of this. I mean, they're supposed to do it a long time ago, but whatever it's happening let's let's better get it out better there. late than never at this point 100 we got to keep the the, the music industry alive in austin we got to keep the restaurants open in austin yes it, it is it, that is critical. austin yeah that it's is like, the whole culture it's like it's like it's crazy. everything here yes it's what makes uh, it's why people love austin so much and right. um we can't we just can't sit back and hope that nothing um, no you know that, that everything will just magically be okay they'll, they'll get through it no they're not i mean it's uh yeah for sure so but at least it we're on the light is at the end of the tunnel okay i've had a lot of talks with other restaurateurs they they do see a light so that's good sign so they just see like okay at least i can see to some extent where i need to go and where where i need to get to so if people can just keep supporting, like you said, that's the best thing they can do. Yeah. So. And avoid the delivery services with the food stuff. Like grab a percent. Up pick up stuff. if you can. Yeah. Pick they take up. like 30% yeah. or more they sometimes. Take, they take up to 35%. I hate yeah. it. Grubhub. Favor takes a uh, uh, 15 to 18%. Some places. But that 12, adds up. 12 percent That's deal. even that adds, adds up. up. Well, your mar- your 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 profit is only about thirty percent in a restaurant. Roughly. If you're lucky, yeah. <laughs> if you're lucky, if you're lucky, yeah. You know, so yeah. When you start cutting into that, right? Like it, any of those fees, that's what that cuts into. It's pure profit. It literally yeah. cuts into the pure profit uh, of it. So yeah, if you can pick it up, um, or there's a cool service in Austin. Have you heard of this uh, called Runner City? No bro oh my god what? i just opened you up to something new it's a facebook group called runner city it's got tens of thousands of members and it's they don't charge the restaurant anything it's like you, you go on there and put in what you want to order and a runner uh responds and says i'll go get it for oh. you and you set up a price but it could with be that anything person. right it could, it could be, be anything. anything you could go to best it, buy and get yep. an iphone or whatever yeah yeah yep. I, okay i've seen this in other cities i didn't know we had a version of it here or that it, it started called- here Austin started it where when the pandemic hit. It's called Runner City, <laughs> oh. and it's grown massively. I support it 100%. All the runners work independently, and they get money. And again, they don't charge the place, right? So the place has nothing to do with it. And you they just negotiate. Like, yeah, you negotiate the delivery with that person. Interesting. I, I had some people bring – I had a, this a girl bring down a Antonelli's cheese uh, from up north all the way to my house for, you know, 25 bucks. Uh, oh, it's fantastic. Shit showed up great you know brought it they, they'll do the whole uh they take care of social distancing they all got masks they're all you know they, they work with you on all that stuff too so you don't have to worry about the safety of that they take it all very seriously so yeah runner city that i've talked about wild. it on the podcast so it, it, some of our regular listeners will probably they'll already know it but yeah dude definitely check it out and if you haven't heard of it if you're listening wow. definitely check out runner city okay yeah Use i'm them. on it and and since you brought up mass, I just I just want to personally say thank you. I think you do a great job of kind of sharing, you know, the right messaging right now that we need. So thanks a lot for doing that. It's Absolutely. risky to to get into politics at all right now. Sure. Um, we are in a very polarized society. Um, yeah. But I have a lot of respect for you and what you do and being so authentic. Uh, right now, <laughs> we we need voices like that because it's a wild place right now. Thanks, man. That means a lot coming from you. Uh, I do. Wild I do take place. some. Uh, I do take some shrapnel on the sides here and there from people. I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. I, I I don't really understand why masks. I understand how we got there. Uh, there's a very specific person who's made masks political, but it, it's sad. Uh, saving lives shouldn't be political. Hundred percent. Look, there's. I know nurses and I know doctors and my fiance they, is a nurse. Yeah. Right I, there, you go. They tell I you right. They, they're day. just like I, I look. I'm not going to. Yeah. Just, Let me um, tell you, the nursing and, and the medical community is is very hurt by the way that society is and tired. They should, and they should be. Like they're in there working in these gowns, like three layers of masks and shields and gowns, like sweating for 12, 15 hour shifts, watching people die. And then 
people are like complaining about putting on a mask for 10 minutes to go to the fucking grocery store. Like, <laughs> dude, just, you're going to pick up some peanut butter, bro. Yeah, you can't put I gotta, on a I'm mask. I'm getting mad. Like, yeah, it, like, I feel it, you. Just, Trust me. I get it. The selfishness I, I, and the, no, I don't know, just the, the lack of compassion. Uh, I think Austin's pretty good, actually. I don't yes. see too many assholes, you know, here in That's our true. city. Um, but, you know, I, I got to give Austin some credit. Did you see People the, the story about, about the mayor? Oh, oh the, gosh, of with course. The, with the wedding? Of course. <laughs> I was devastated, bro. I was devastated. Like, the, the, why did you do that? That is <laughs> so not dumb. good. That dumb, is not dumb, dumb, good. Dumb. Yeah. Uh, it's, I mean, honestly, it's, he'll never recover from that. No, I, I don't actually know anything. I, I I haven't lived here long enough to really have a good finger on the pulse of local. I met politics. him one time, and I know people that know him, um, and have worked. And wor I knew somebody that worked with him for years. To be honest with you, pretty close. Um, but look, I, I accept his apology and all that and everything. I'm just saying, like from a public opinion standpoint, like people are just not going to forgive him for that. And you know, no, just he's no. toast. Um, yeah it sucks. Well, whichever uh, no matter what side you're on you're you can be insulted by what he did yeah i'm insulted because i'm like man why would you give that message him, to people yeah. go do that then they find yeah, out now people aren't right. going to trust what you say yeah and you're a hypocrite right. like you can't tell right. us to stay home and then go to your and the people wedding. who are sort of anti-mask are just going to think that his other stuff was just political and that fuel for the like, fire I, absolutely yeah like i you know you can't handing it to him that's why and, you'll and never they have find a good argument. Politics. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh, dude, I hate, I hate yeah. I, I me, follow yeah. politics, especially Feels you know, me. national politics, but I yeah. I think that is a that is a brutal space. <laughs> oh man, I would never be into politics. And you know, it's funny. Um and politics comes up on the show, and we've had politicians on the show, and I've had, you, you know, have. I've seen. even had a, a difficult dis discussion with one in particular. Um sure. and in fact, we have another episode coming out with a very uh uh, CEO of Funware, P H U N. Google that, you will see. Yeah, I don't even need to say more. Um, he's come on. That was a very. We're, that's going to be a two parter for us. Two part episode. It'll be very thrilling. Um, and I don't really, honestly, I don't really like these those kind of conversations. To be frank with you, and and I'll say it to the listeners. I, 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 I enjoy these kind of conversations with you where we learn and we have fun and there's something to it. And I'm just not a political person either. And I, and I don't like that controversy and head butting heads and trying to prove something. And I mean, no, I, I guess but, I'll but do it are, if I have to, but no, but you are, you know, bringing things to light that are important. Sure. Have the conversation. And, and I, um, I think, absolutely. you know, to your point, of course, this is going to be easier. We are kind of, you know, cut from the same cloth in many ways, but, um, I think it's important for people to get out of their bubble, no matter which bubble you're in. Um, sure. So I'm, 100%. you know, I, I like that you do that. I, I really do. Um, I have friends yeah. on all sides awesome. of the political spectrum. Um, you know, I, I think it's important to just kind of understand we're all human and not anybody is bad on either side. Uh, exactly. By nature, by nature, yes. you can be bad on both sides, but just being uh, red or blue or this or that doesn't, automatically make you bad or good either um but Absolutely. uh we should be talking about this stuff uh so that that yeah. being said I, I i do have a lot of respect for what you do so i appreciate it but i also That's appreciate awesome. talks Thank like you. this because like we can obviously talk for another two hours which we shouldn't do um but we could <laughs> <laughs> no. it could go on for uh, trust me it, we could. it happens I, uh, yeah, we you could. know but please so, enjoy my no. book Thank I'm, you. I'm so yes. glad you got a copy um i'm glad we got to do this again after the technical errors that occurred oh man i again i thank you so much <laughs> uh to you and haley uh for allowing this to happen again um i was so embarrassed y'all will have no idea how embarrassed i was uh, tell people where to follow you online your instagram and all that stuff definitely definitely catch me on instagram that's where like my daily antics are happening uh at chef michael keto um you know that's where i'm doing stories i'm doing daily stuff extra free recipes i do have more recipes on my website chefmichael.com with the dash in between chef-michael.com um and check out my new book it's it's everywhere books are sold pretty much so uh amazon walmart target 
uh, com, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million. Uh, and speaking of local stuff uh, or s- supporting small business, if you go to IndieBooks.com, you can actually search for where you can buy my book locally. Many of them will deliver. Um, oh, but supporting your local cool. bookstore would also Damn. be another fantastic I feel way bad now. To, uh, to, to keep this running. So uh, yeah, IndieBooks.com. Uh, or of course, that. if 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 Amazon Prime is your that's you know that's why I used. I'm sorry. Undeniably, the easiest route to go in, yes, in 2020. I Amazon um, people, but I buy local all the time too. Trust me. <laughs> well, thanks again, and uh, no, thank you hope to talk to you soon, my friend. Absolutely, thank you all very much. Uh, stay safe out there, please. Uh, with thank everything you. Wear happening, a mask. Enjoy. Yes, wear a mask. The Lone Star Play Podcast is produced by Texas Real Food. Go to texasrealfood.com and you can search your city for stores, butchers, restaurants, farmers markets, and more who are using fresh, artisanal, organic sources. It's a fun site that brings all natural options all together. I hope you enjoyed this episode. For more information, go to thelonestarplay.com. I'm your host, Patrick Scott Armstrong. Until next time. Until next time.